Uh, Conrad, to share testimony, uh, how he came to know the Lord from a Muslim family. Uh, we praise God for the faith God has given to him for many years now. And uh, I feel very encouraged uh, meeting brother online and it's very encouraging to hear his testimony today. Let us be attentive to hear our brother Conrad sharing his testimony. Amen. Thank you for the opportunity for um, allowing me to be here and listen to me and share what I've got to say. I think let's just, I just want to pray and ask God to prepare everybody's hearts. Father, we thank you, Lord, as we come before you, Lord, this day. I thank you, Lord God, as I'm about to share what you've done in my life, Lord, that you can help me bring out the points that needs to be shared, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that what I share here, Lord, you get the glory and you get the praise and you get the honor, Lord. This is not about me, Lord, but it's about what, what you've done in my life, Lord God. And I thank you for that, Lord. I thank you for that. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you assist me and you go before me, Lord. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we go back a long way to 1989. <laughs> That's quite a long time ago. Um, I basically got saved in 1989. But let's go back earlier to my school, school youth where I basically served Islam. I was born into a Muslim family. My father, his name was Muhammad Hashim Abdurrahman. And his father came from India, strangely. He was, his father came from India. But his father died at a very young age. I never knew his father and he never spoke much about his father because his father died very young. So in a way, it's quite strange that I'm sharing my testimony basically to people that is where my roots began, so to say. So I just want to say, you know, that um, growing up as a Christian, sorry, growing up as a, as a, as a child, you know, we, we, we basically, my, my father wasn't really a, a very staunch Muslim. He, he wasn't a, 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 a everyday Muslim, so to say, but he was still a Muslim. And, you know, we, we, we celebrated the Eid, we, we, we did the fast, you know, we did all of those kind of things. And I, I remember, I, I think I was, I, was, I was basically in grade nine or so. That's my second year high school or third year high school. I felt that I was not really a good Muslim. And I then, out of my own, started studying the Muslim faith. I started learning about it. I started going to mosque. I started doing all the Muslim things. And I just want to say, you know, this, this is a faith that, that pulled you in very quickly. They, 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 they got so much support around them. Everybody, once you, once you in the Muslim faith, you, 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 you basically protect it, you know, in every way. They, they, they serve you. They, 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 it, it's a very close, tight, bonded faith that, that, People support each other. But anyway, um, be that as it may, um, I, I never spent a lot of time speaking to my father about the Muslim faith. But I spoke a lot of time about my, my to my granny about the Muslim faith. You know, she was she was the staunch Muslim person of the family. She married a man that, you know, was the editor of the Muslim Digest in South Africa and they were the big Muslim shots and anyway 
you know, I still remember talking to her one day and, and she was saying to me that the man is basically the God of the woman in the faith, you know, that they serve the man and, you know, I've got to play this role as a, as a Muslim man and she tried to encourage me and but anyway, you know, going on um, further on in life, I passed my trick. I, I basically, you know, was often on Muslim. And then I met, I met my wife next to me, uh, um, age of 21, I think, or 22. And we got married as a Christian. Okay. We were accepted by the family when we got married as, as a Christian. But we got married into the Anglican faith. We weren't born again Christians. We were, we were, I don't know what you call an Anglican, Orthodox Christian. They accepted us. And anyway, the problem came when I came home from work one day and my wife was standing by the window and she was standing like a like a zombie you know what's a zombie a zombie is somebody that couldn't talk and she was just looking out the window and in a way five minutes i think we were married three years three years we were married five minutes later she gets an epileptic fit and she's laying on the floor there shaking and i've never seen this in my life you know we've been courting for three years before we got married so I know her three, six years already and the first time she get an epileptic fit in her life. And anyway, you know, we call the ambulance and and I'm, I'm driving behind this ambulance to the hospital now, okay? But my heart is pulled out of me. You know, I, I, I don't know whether she's going to live or die. And I make a deal with God. I don't know what God I made a deal with. I just made a deal with God. I knew there's a God up there and I made a deal with him. And I said, to him, Lord, well, I said, God, if you give my wife back to me, I will do anything I can in my power to pay you back. I didn't know all the words. I wasn't born again. I basically knew nothing about the Bible. And anyway, my wife got healed and a couple of minutes, a couple of days later, my wife's sister had a, came from a born again church. They came to pray for her and they ministered the, the word to us that day. And, and that day, this guy, his name is Alan Africa, asked Jesus for a Christ life. Who wants to make Jesus Lord of his life? And there were about, I don't know, about maybe 15, 20 people. And I think I was maybe one of the last people I can't remember. And it came to my turn, you know, do I want to make, it, it, was, it, was, it was in a group where you had to say yes or no. And I said, I couldn't, I couldn't resist it. To me, it was a no-brainer. It wasn't actually, it wasn't actually something to consider. Anyway, I said yes. And anyway, they prayed for me and, and I'm born again. I'm born again and I go to church. The first time I come into this massive, big, happy, clappy church, the music, the praise and worship, you know, it, it was, it was, it was <laughs> overwhelming, so to say, you know, and, and anyway, I'm born again. They, they offer a beginner's class for, for born again people, and I attend this class. And as the class is going on, I tell this one guy that's attending the class, I say to him, you know what? My swearing is starting to get less. 
and 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 the, and I still remember the 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 leader that was doing the class. He turns around and he says, "Brother, it must all go. You know, not getting less." I still remember that. And anyway, I traveling to work. I'm giving people a lift to work, man. And two people are born again. Very very. Uh, 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 experienced born again people and the year that I now gave my mom my heart to Jesus you know and and I um, am still shy to fully admit that I'm born again and I'm listening to gospel music and they saying oh brother I like your gospel music and and I'm not proud to say it's mine I, I say no this is my wife's music I'm listening to you know and anyway, you know, as time goes on, me listening to the word of God, faith grows in my heart and I'm getting stronger and stronger and stronger and, and starting to get bold, you know, starting to proclaim the word, not shy of the gospel anymore. And the Lord is doing mighty things in my life. You could see it. You could see it. It wasn't small things, it was, it was massive things. And anyway, um, I just want to bring one guy, one guy I will never forget in my whole life. He was a reformed Christian. Uh, I won't get into that, but I have to make this statement. His name was Edward Peterson. And I'm, I'm going for the church, I'm ushering the church, I'm a home cell leader, I'm a telephone counselor in the church, I'm just about everything in the church. We are children's school teachers, whatever I and finds to do, we do in the church. We are, you know, angels in the church. Everything that needs to be done, we're doing. I'm involved in everything. If you just name it, I'm involved. I'm the, I'm the, I'm the everybody, you know. And anyway, so this guy, he says to me, I'm an usher for Benny Hinn. Can you imagine that? 1990, I'm an usher for Benny Hinn. And, and we're going miracle mad and, you know, we're just on fire for the Lord. Wow, we're on fire for the Lord. We're going out, we're going door to door, knocking on doors, knocking on Muslim doors, knocking on any doors, sharing the gospel. Even though the people, Muslims say, well, brother, Jesus died for you also. We weren't shy, shy, shy to share the gospel. But anyway, coming back to this guy, Edward Peterson. I'm telling him now about the miracle power of God and, you know, God doing all these things, you know. And he very quietly, in a very still, quiet, confident voice, told me, and these were these words, and I'll never forget it. I want to find it, brother. I want to find it, brother. Shake his head. He says to me, brother, if God is still doing the miracle that you say is doing today, then why can't man walk on water? And you know, all my life, all my spiritual life, I wanted to walk on water. I believe God for everything. And anyway, I was a manager of a very big company and God opened doors for me. In South Africa, that time in the 1990s, we had this thing called the apartheid system where so-called white people and colored people couldn't mix. They, they, we were segregated. And under the, the apartheid government, um, white people and black people and colored people couldn't be together. And my boss came to me and my boss said to me, I have to make you a manager. And I said to him, and now what's the problem? And he said to me, hello, we in a part of the era. I said, yeah, and now what? And he said to me, I'm gonna make you a manager over white people. And anyway, he did that. And it was an absolute war, a war. You know, we, we white people wouldn't work under, under non-white people. And you know how God, how God worked. It was so amazing, you know, how we, he just 
man, it was it was it was all God and nothing but God. That to give you an example, we had this old man boilermaker. Okay, he was 66 years old. The Afrikaans word is for cramped as hell as, as ever. For cramped means um, absolute racist against non-white people. You know, he's born like that. You, you, you can't change their natures. And anyway, he gets an heart attack at work. And one of the so-called non-white people has to drive him home in his own car. And they come to their house and the family goes absolutely crazy that a non-white person is driving this car. And anyway, cut a long story short, God broke down all that barriers where I work. Where, where non-white people started being friends with white people. And it was such a it was such an amazing, I can I say peaceful thing, you know, that we work together in harmony. I was sharing the gospel at work with everybody. I was I was got, I was getting into trouble with people. People came to me at work and said to me, you know, this Jesus thing, this Jesus thing is gonna get you into trouble. And how, how God blessed me financially, doors open for me. I, I, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't measure what He's done for me. For somebody of, of color to to have overtaken white people in that big organization was absolutely amazing. But anyway, I just want to share the other side of it just quickly. On my own personal family side, that was the work side. The work side was I was financially blessed. I had company cards, I had profit shares. I mean, it was just financial blessings and financial blessings. But come back to the family. When I got born again, only when I became born again, the, comp the, the family had a meeting and they banned me from the family. No contact with Conrad at all. Not my brother, not my sister. None of my cousins, nobody was allowed to come near me. And you know how God took the Christian brothers that surrounded me. It's like I didn't need a family. I, I had a different family. I started sharing the gospel with my brother, who was Muslim, and my and my and my and my and my, and my father. And it was a war. It was an absolute war. That, that this name of Jesus, you, you, you know, every, every demon in hell was assigned to attack me. And it, it became an unpleasant thing to visit the family. But anyway, I had my own thing. I was buried in a church. I was happy in a church. I was happiness beyond, beyond measure. But here's the thing. One of my cousins, Jamil, is on drugs and he went to every Muslim rehabilitation center in South Africa and they can't heal him. And, and, and his mother, Auntie Farida, comes to my mother and she says to my mother, Con, Conrad, go pray for Jamil. And my mother says to him, you know Conrad is going to pray in the name of Jesus. And she says, I don't care what name it is, because I need my son here. Anyway, I go to Jamil that day and Jamil gets instantly born again. He's a Muslim, instantly born again, he's on drugs, he's instantly off drugs. He never ever touched a drug ever again, you know, after he became born again. And Jamil, you know, Muslims don't eat bacon and, you know, now Jamil just wants to eat bacon. Every pizza he buys, he just wants to eat bacon on the pizza. And, and now Jamil is like me, also in trouble now because he's also serving the Lord. And, and he's starting to preach to his family and, and so, so it goes on. And anyway, I remember one day, you know, my, 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 my wife got sick again and I took her to, to the hospital and I still remember my father coming to me and saying to me, why did you take her to the hospital? Why didn't you pray for her at all? You know, and I just thought to myself, you know, why, why would you say that to me? You know, I mean, I'm, I'm then your only son. 
and I just want to say, you know, that 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 the the Muslim people they saw they although I was banned from the family, they saw something in me that they admired because my my one cousin didn't want to worry about the 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 banning of the family and he came to me and he started talking to me and then he started bragging by all of my other cousins you know that i'm i'm really untouched by the fact that 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 they banned me and 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 anyway i i shared the gospel with him and he, he didn't want to accept the gospel but he he he's still um a very big uh, a friend of mine so kind of long story short um i think there are it was myself jamil and shadley's family in 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 our family there are now three born again roots that 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 god is um basically saved and we are praying for for the rest of our family and i just want to give god the glory you know that if i'd be stuck in a muslim tradition and married a muslim woman i i would have been on my way to hell today so i, I give god all the glory for what he's done in my life and I, I'm, I'm not i'm not interested in the financial blessings because to, to me that is all sideline issues that that that's that's trimmings it, it it's the life that it touched it, it it it's that loneliness that 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 when when your own brother hates you because of your faith that 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 you can forgive him not not be be a grudge and harbor grudges against him and i just want to say you know serving the lord being being all this time in 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 the lord um using the word of god to to to, to pray for those that spitefully use you and persecute you not to harbor unforgiveness in your heart um it 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 it, it, it it's a joy unspeakable you know it's a joy unspeakable um today um today i i i'm stronger in the lord than i've ever been in my life the bible to me now is as exciting as it was the first day i opened it and i just give god the glory you know that as as we as i go on in life um i can be a blessing to other people and start sharing and 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 the gifts that he's given me not 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 the uh, not the uh, the work gifts but uh, the spiritual gifts that uh, i can use it to his glory and uh, thank you very much for listening thank you amen <laughs> that's it i got a lot lot more to say but let's you said keep it 15 minutes so thank you for listening Thank you for sharing testimony. God bless you.